Amen. Then, the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts. To every soldier a part and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not linger it, but cast lot for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. We say, They parted my lament, they parted my lemon among them. And for my vessel, they did cast lots. This thing therefore the soldier did. Are they doing it out of ignorance? Yes, because all those things was fulfilling the prophecy concerning Christ. They are doing it but out of ignorance. Even a thief, even a thief is mocking an innocent man. All they are trying to do is what? To make Jesus to by cut the cross. To say, ah, I know do again. So there is a time. The agony was too much. He said, Father, it will be possible. Take this cup away from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And the will of the Father is that Christ will go to the cross and die and redeem you and I. And bring us back in into his kingdom. You must survey the cross. You must ponder on that, that what happened on the cross of Calvary. If you God open your eyes to understand what happened on the cross. In John 19 30, Christ shouted, It is finished. That is where he paid. And they bring make open shell to all powers. Praise the Lord, somebody. First Corinthians chapter one. Enemies of cross. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one from verse seventeen. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or ways, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Jesus, the power and the wisdom of God to save mankind on the cross. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the prisoner of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The power of God comes from the cross. The power that worketh in us, the power that worketh in us, it came through the cross. If not the cross, Holy Ghost will not come. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. I don't know what you receive within this Holy Ghost baptism program. But if anything has happened in your life, wait for your own cross. Because it's coming. If you know come today, there was a place in the book of Luke where he said, you will carry your cross daily, 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 daily. Not any time. Daily. Luke chapter Luke chapter 9 verse 23. And he said to them, Oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Daily. That means the cross comes every day. It's not only on Sundays. It's not only on Tuesdays. But every day 
day. It can be in the morning. It can be every minute. But your own will come according to as written of you. Take your cross and follow me. Second Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 21. It says, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we have been weak. How be it, we are in so ever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am also, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, often. Of the Jews, five times receive I for the stripes, save one. Five times. That means 39 strokes in are see times five times. Praise the Lord. Take your cross. Follow him daily, daily. This apostle Paul, counting his own. He said in verse 25, say, Thrice was I beaten with the Lord. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered sheep weak. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often in perils of waters. Great dangers. Perils means great dangers of water. Praise the Lord. Great dangers of water. Perils of water. In perils of robbers. Thieves. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. In Paris, in the city, in Paris, in the wilderness, in Paris, in the sea, in Paris, among false brethren, false brethren, they are the enemies of the cross. They will not allow you to achieve the purpose. False brethren. In weariness, and painfulness in washing often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the, all the churches. All these things is only to take care of the church. That is why he passing all these, all these dangers, difficulties. Inside water, among false brethren, let's go in the morning. The person will go in the night. They cause divisions. Apostle Paul was lamenting. But why is he doing that? That is his own cross to make sure that he take care of the church. How many of us can pay sacrifice? How many of us can lie and defend what we believe? How many of us will say, I will die for what I believe? No matter what it will cost me. No matter who the person is. How many? And the same apostle will say, follow me as I follow Christ. Christ did not pass cross. Apostle did not bypass cross. How do you think that you can bypass the cross? Who do you think you are? You will face your own. Let somebody wake up. Let somebody wake up. When you know when you know what you want to achieve, then you will now strategize and take a stand and plan and execute and achieve a goal. Baby Christian, baby Christian. Any slighting, more Murmuring is a sin. That is why they murmured in the wilderness. All their carcasses fell in the wilderness. None of them enter promised land. None. I think you murmur this age. Then God will say, Ah, that is my beautiful daughter. That is my handsome son. That is my, my worker. That is my minister. No, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
What he had in those days, he still had it today. Stop murmuring. Do the work of God. Cheerfully. Committed. Because there is a reward. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. From verse 35. The son of Paul was talking. Because he knew what he's looking for. Romans 8, are you there? From verse 35. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for their sake we all kill all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, neither death, nor anything greater shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, Lord. That is on the cross. What shall separate you? The son of Apostle Paul was telling us after all those great dangers he suffered and yet he's not moved because he had a focus. Because there is a spirit of God in him. Now, brother, sister, you say you are receiving baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wait, let's confirm it. You're going to be confirmed. In book of Deuteronomy, before God will approve you, he must try you to know what is in your heart. Even with hunger, even with hunger, Apostle Paul was hungry. You heard him say, hunger, nothing to eat, nothing to wear. Because that is how he will now get his own blessing. Brethren, in every dark tunnel, at the end thereof, there will be light. Hold on to this God. He never fails. It's a question of time. Praise the Lord, somebody. The cross of Christ will be no effect if we don't identify with it. If we don't appreciate it, that means his own cross has nothing to light home for us. We must see it and we must embrace it because it's an emblem of shame and suffering. It's not easy. It's not easy for Christ. But yet, he must do it. Tell your brother, tell your sister, you must carry your cross. Galatians chapter 5. From verse 11. He said, I'm and I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? You heard that? He's preaching circumcision and yet he's suffering persecution. Is it possible? Yes. Then is the offense of the cross cease? I will. I would that we are even cut off. We trouble you. I will. That that problem, that problem that disturbing you not to serve God, not to follow the truth, not to follow the light. He said, I wish, I will, if it can be cut off. But brother, sister, it cannot be cut off. It cannot. It cannot, oh.
In book of 2 Corinthians, Apostle Paul was telling God to take away this problem, this problem. The thorn in his flesh. Three times he said, yeah, big God, three times. Take away this, this, this problem. But what did God answer him? My grace is sufficient. Tell your neighbor, the grace of God is sufficient for you to carry your cross. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 12. As many as desire to make a face shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For the cross of Christ, you must suffer persecution. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. May God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and the I unto the world. You must be crucified to the world and the world will be crucified by you. That means world this side, you this side. Nothing, nothing connect two of you by the cross. By the cross. You die to the world. And the world died to you. No agreement. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. It is on that cross. That we are made to be one body. Bible says. In book of First Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 13. For by one spirit we are baptized into our body. No more ma male or female. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. It is was achieved on the cross. Let's read the Ephesians chapter 2. The cross of Calvary supposedly supposed to make us to be one in Christ. If it is even worse, the denominations have had their days and their dear. Then the end time message, their own is even worse. Fragmentation here and there. I'm of this party. I'm of the other party. I'm of the thunder. I'm of, 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 of speaking in tongue. I'm of uh, uh, brother Joseph. I baptize him by the name of Abraham. They have denominated this message. But listen what the Bible says. Philippians, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 14. It says, For he is our peace. What the Bible say? For he is our peace. Who is our peace? Jesus. Where did he achieve peace? In the cross. In John 14, 27, he said, My peace I live with you, not as the world give. The peace that came through the cross of Calvary, no material thing can give it to you. For he is our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having our bodies in his place, the enemy, the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make himself of two one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which we are afar off and to them that we are near. For through him we both are says by one spirit unto the Father. Now and therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens 
with the saints and of the house of God. That is upon the cross. We are no more stranger brethren. We are now fellow citizens. For when you have the Holy Ghost in you, you are part of him. You are no more strangers. You are now a peculiar person. A choosing generation. Praise Master Jesus. So you should mark them that cause division. Mark them. Anybody that is causing division. Anybody that is not making peace among the brethren. That person is the enemy of the cross. Mark such person. In book of Philippians chapter 3. Let's read it. Apostle Paul says something there. Concerning those that their belly is their gospel. They say they are chief. Chief of this, chief of that. What are they gathering? They are gathering club or party. When we're supposed to be one. Those suppose this message, the suppose message that's supposed to unite us, not to divide us. We are restored, therefore restoration must be complete. I'm a poor, I'm of Apollos. Who told you? Did you baptize in the name of Apostle Paul? There's he that watered it and he that planted it, but God is the one that gives it increase. Let the entire message grow. Let them come together and embrace this truth so that we can go home. Christ will not come on this confusion. Christ cannot come in this confusion we are into. Philippians 3. From verse 17. He said, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which work so as you have us for an example. Mark them, mark them. He said, for many work of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping and weeping for the end time message believers. No love, no unity. Everybody have a separate agenda. You are the enemy of the cross. God, a purpose why cross came. To reconcile us. And you are dividing us. Apostle Paul says he's weeping when he's saying it. And they that are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is what? Destruction. Destruction is coming upon you. If you don't repent. Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? Who man everything? They want to be chief apostles. They want to be this. They want to be that. And dividing the church. And dividing the body of Christ. Let them repent. Though. Destruction is coming. Apostle Paul was weeping. In book of Romans chapter 16. Let's go there. He, make, he mentioned it again. Romans chapter 16. From verse 17. Romans 16 from verse 17. He said, he said more applicable in this end time. He said, now I beseech you brethren. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are sought serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good ways and their first riches deceive the hearts of the simple. First riches. They will carry one scripture. Turn it upside down. Brahan say, Brahan say, Brahan say. And deceiving the simple. Praise Master Jesus. But Jesus Christ, in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, he obeyed even a death on the cross to make sure he redeemed mankind. Why can't we? That our followers of Jesus Christ obey as he obeyed. 
and serve as his son and walk as he walk. He is a servant leader. There's no pompousness in him. There's no pompousness in him. He served by example. He said that he that will be greatest among you will be the servant. The prophet, the way Abraham told us, the way up is a down. Humble yourself. Chief apostle, humble yourself. You are claiming, arrogating names to yourself. Every ministry, no ministry can hide. Every ministry will make manifest. It's a question of time. It's a question of time. Whatever you are claiming, we made manifest. Mark them that cause divisions. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that we are sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now had he reconciled he had reconciled He needs us to come back to him. He has reconciled us. Let us not be enemy of that cross. Let us abide and walk and obey and keep to his rules. Because this game, this race we are running, if you run outside the rules, you will be disqualified. You must learn according to the law. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. He's our example. He's our master. If you follow him, you will not go astray. Hebrews chapter 12. From verse 1. He said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin we do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the less that is said before us. Can somebody hear something? He said, Let so. It is said before you and I. See how you learn it. See how you learn it. In verse 2. He said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Considering the cross. He endured it and endured the shame, the humiliation because of what? What had been set before him. And when he accomplished it, Bible says he seated at the right hand of his father. And he said he's coming to take you and I. That where he is, that is where we'll be. But if you don't have where he goes, come near that place. Can see that place. As men that have made it, it is him that walketh in us. So there must be evidence that you have received something. Because this program 
It is the higher business on this earth for God to joke with. Praise the Lord. I don't know what you are passing through. In book of Hebrews chapter 11, there is some group of people, some names from verse 32. You go home and go and read about them. He said, and what shall I say more? And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. You know how Gideon served God? You know how he dismantled the altar of his fathers? You know how he began to ask God questions? When that angel visited him, he said, if God be for us, why is all these things happening? If you have the Holy Ghost, why is your life still remain like that? If you have received Holy Ghost, because I believe we are not Pentecostals that receive by absorption. No, brother, sister, if the, the Spirit of Christ enter you, something must happen. It's not by dream. Physically, you will see changes. That sister you used to know before, you will not know her again with those weaknesses. Gideon dismantled and scattered all the altars that does not glorify God. He burned them, both those in the mountain and hidden places, and served God. That is why God boasted with Abraham in book of Genesis chapter 18 in verse 19. He said, Abraham, I know Abraham. That he bring up his generation, his children, in fear of God, in judgment and in justice. You are the children of God. Hey, somebody, it is not the way I will carry my cross. It's not the same way you, sister, brother, you carry your own. There's a purpose. Though one spirit, but different members. Praise the Lord. One body, but different members. He said, He said, Of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Samuel, because the way he served God, for 40 years, he not fight any battle. In book of Job 6, in verse 11 and 12, it says, if they will serve and obey, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in prison. God demands service and obedience. After you have received the Holy Ghost, you will serve God without any fear. Without compromise. Without condition. If it's not you, who will it be? God, why me? Why me? Why me? Ah, they all, all my mates, they are married. All my mates, they have done this. All my mates, they have done. Why me? Why me? If not you, who will it be? Who? Okay, you read Job. Job, this, this, Job, this, that. That is for Job. You have your own. You have your own path to pray. Let us walk this walk without any fear. Because what we are saying, it is real. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. Stop being the enemy of the cross. Obey God and God will bless you. Can we bow down our head and talk to God? Tell God, may I never create an enmity with you. May I never be an enemy of the cross. May I move as the Spirit is leading me. Now that I'm in Christ, Father, help me to learn my own lens. 
Help me to run my own lens. Open your mouth, talk to God now. Father, give me grace that I will carry my cross and make it at the end. I, Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of my faith, who I am looking on to, he carried his own. May I never complain. May I never complain. Give me the grace. Give me the grace, Lord, to carry my own cross. Give me the grace that I may understand the reason why I went to the cross. The power behind the cross. Open your mouth, talk to God. In Jesus, powerful name, we are praying. Louder. Finally. 